Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Vikram, you have a question? The derivation of the non-dimensional impedance, you took the common point x equal to 0 for both the left and right running waves. The left running wave travels a distance L before beating the material which impedance we have to determine. So, we should put x equal to L for the left running wave. Okay, so the question is when we did this problem on impedance and related it to uh, this uh, growth rate and so on. Uh, the question is our sample if it is on the left side should we uh, uh, should we call that as x equal to L or if our convention is consistent with the travel times and so on. So, let us just take a quick look at this. So, this was the tube and I had x equal to 0 here and x equal to L here and I will call this as time t1 when the wave reached there and time t2 when you are at some other time t2 and our solution is we had p hat equal to a e power i k x plus b e power minus i k x. So, this is the left running wave and this is the uh, one that you are questioning and this is the right running wave and if I multiply by e power i omega t on both sides then this will get e power i omega t. So, this would be a e power i k x uh, plus omega t. Uh, please correct me if there is an algebraic mistake because it will be crucial the signs and so on p power minus i k x plus uh, i omega t. So, this can be written as a e power i k into x plus omega can be written as k is omega over c. So, this should be x plus c t. Right. So, plus b e power uh, I will take i k out minus x uh, let me take omega out. So, this will be x over c right plus t uh, if I write omega <coughs> right. is this ok so far did I make a mistake did you get the same. Okay, so uh, uh, we look at left running wave, and which is the left running wave? This one, right? This is the left running wave, and this is the right. Why do you call this left running wave? Because it is t plus x over c, and we showed that that would correspond to left running wave. Now, the uh, let's call this this t plus x over c or the other quantity t minus x over c they are called retarded times. So, let us first take a look at the left running wave left uh, running wave and we say x over c plus t we will call this tau it is called retarded time. So, uh, we can call it tau l corresponding left running wave. So, let us say you were at t time t 1 when the wave started from here and reached here at time t 2. So, uh, at x equal to L, L over C plus t 1 equal to 0 plus t 2 that means t 2 equal to uh, t 1 plus L over C. So, this is consistent the wave was first at t 1 and then after some extra time l over c reached t 2. 
now uh, so this is uh, consistent with our understanding so although we have zero less than l but that's working out now if you look at the right running wave so there it will be x over c uh, p minus x over c equal to tau r so at x equal to 0 you will have t2 minus 0 equal to t1 minus l over c so t1 equal to t2 plus l over c so if the wave was at um, x equal to 0 at time t2 and then after some time period extra t l over c it reaches t1 which is consistent with our understanding that wave is moving from 0 to l so both are consistent so there is no need to modify the coordinate system is it okay okay any other questions yeah so speak loudly yeah yeah I think it uh, uh, stands for this growth or decay. Complex uh, speed of some because we we have to take the uh, or, uh, or the solution that we finally get ah. that will not satisfy the initial wave equation. It will not because uh, okay. Let me work out this and get back to you. Okay, I am not having a offhand answer. I think it should satisfy. It, it would satisfy. But uh, you mean uh, to interpret complex speed as uh, okay? Let me come back to you. Okay, I don't have a clear. Uh, I mean, I think in terms of complex wave number and complex frequency. But yeah, if you fix one to be real and the other to be complex, yes, you should have complex speed. Uh, get back to you. Sorry, I'm not having a good answer. Okay, any other question? Sorry about this. Okay, so uh, I want to uh, uh, first talk about uh, special functions. Uh, so I uh, uh, will give some references and also nice NPTEL lecture exists. Uh, so uh, special functions are uh, solution to ordinary differential equations which are studied by some people a lot, and then their properties are well known. So then they are called special functions. So sin x, cos x are also special functions. They're very special because we use it all the time. Uh, so they are all special cases of what we call hypergeometric functions and so on. So uh, uh, in particular, we are concerned with Bessel functions, and uh, there is a very nice NPTEL course by Agrawal and Srivatsava. This uh, reference is here. I can mail you the link. Uh, I think uh, I, I checked it plays very well on the uh, computer. So when such a lecture is there, uh, it doesn't make any sense in redoing this whole thing so I am not going to do it and uh, uh, this is the website of this class and you can see lecture um, 6 deals directly with Bessel function and properties and uh, the um, earlier lectures on um, series solutions and so on that deals with how to get a general series solution and, and, and so on and so forth. So I recommend that if you do not have the background on special functions or getting uh, solutions of ordinary differential equation the ordinary differential equations in terms of series and so on uh, please go through it it's it's worth it as an engineer one should know bessel function i think it's quite critical <coughs> so this is the course website and you can do google and it will come out uh, <coughs> and the book that i used to learn is uh, hume and miller uh, it's titled second course in ordinary differential equations for scientists and engineers uh, springer well like it is a really nice book and it is a math book without you know sometimes you get bogged down by math book because they are so worried about existence and uniqueness and theorems and lemmas and so on he does not deal with any of that he uh, explains to you how to solve the equations uh, and what the special functions are what are the properties how to apply the boundary conditions when will it work when it will not work when it will converge and so on rather than worry about theorems and uh, lemmas and so on. Uh, and uh, it is really about uh, for scientists and engineers not for mathematicians so it is ideal book and I really enjoyed reading this book and I have read this book several times I think a Bessel function is chapter 2 
it is there in our library actually this book. Uh, I think uh, many of you have studied the book by uh, N. N. Lebedev. Uh, so, he has written a, a book on spatial functions and their applications uh, and this is a Dover book. So, it must be their data book also for reasonable price and it is actually a Russian book, but translated. So, this is a good book also and again um, we can understand this book without any problem. It is worth getting one of these books. Of course, the other book is quite expensive the first one. Is, uh, when I bought it as a student 20 years back it was 70 dollar or something. So, I, I do not think there is an Indian edition. And the last number of books I went to the library sometime back and checked and a whole stack of books on uh, uh, special functions and if you search um, on the internet or any bookstore you will find lots of books on special functions and uh, Bessel functions to be specific and, and, and so on. So, there is no dearth of this um, uh, material on studying this plus uh, as always there is Wikipedia which gives a good amount of material and plus there is lot of uh, PDFs and uh, also other sites like site of mathematical Wolfram site or on special functions and so on. So, I think there is no excuse to really not knowing special functions plus this wonderful NPTEL lecture is also there uh, by these people from Rurki. So, uh, I think I am not going to uh, deal with uh, 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 I am not going to teach this special functions. Uh, I, I used to give, give a few classes on special functions, but now that all this NPTEL is there already I would not uh, teach. I, I instead I will give you assignment. So, if I do not want to teach I give assignment. So, you can write a computer program uh, to calculate and plot Basel and Neumann functions. You can write first order and second order, zeroth order and so on and play with it and see how the functions look like. I think it is quite important to play with these plots and uh, you do whichever language or you can do it and see your Fortran and then draw a graph or you can uh, write the online in MATLAB or Mathematica or, or Excel. I mean that is my favorite it works very very fine. And uh, of course, if you have integer order you use Bessel and Neumann and if you have uh, uh, fractional order you use j nu and j minus nu that means, uh, uh, it is the same Bessel, but you use uh, order and it is negative. Uh, it would not work when your order, uh, order is integer because uh, j of 1 and j of minus 1 are linearly dependent. So, you need two linearly independent uh, solutions for second order differential equations. So, that is why we look for a linearly independent one uh, given j and that is what you get y, but I would not uh, bother to teach you this, but like I said there is plenty of places where you can learn this stuff. Okay. And uh, uh, I <coughs> will harp a little bit on multidimensional acoustics, but not a whole lot <coughs> because I half the semester is kind of up. So, I want to get to combustion instability of thermo or thermoacoustics as soon as possible. Uh, so, uh, uh, but I will very briefly cover this and uh, uh, the foundations of acoustics basic mathematics and basic acoustics by Skrudzik. Uh, this is a very nice book really lovely book it is there in our library. Uh, I really enjoyed reading this book and I think this is the best on this multidimensional acoustics which best, best book I have seen. Well, at least in my opinion uh, it is not a universal statement you may not like this book, but it is surely there in the library. And uh, <coughs> Professor Munjal from IIC is a very famous professor from India. Uh, <coughs> He has written a book on acoustics of ducts and mufflers with <laughs> applications to exhaust and ventilation systems <coughs> design. And uh, this book is not in print, I think. So, you would not, uh, I could not find it in any bookstore, but uh, it is there in the library. So, uh, it is a very nice book, and it is it's written such that the people who read it would understand. Some books you on, on get the feeling that the author did not want you to understand, but this is a, a really nice book. I really enjoyed it, <coughs> and uh, is a very famous Indian professor. And uh, Moore Seringard is a very nice book uh, uh, on theoretical acoustics, and this is written more like a physicist view of things. But those of you who are inclined to studying physics would uh, really enjoy reading this book. Also, in our library, of course, there are plenty of um, 
other books, but this is my view of the world. So, we were uh, looking at uh, model solutions and I uh, wrote a, uh, a different equation for wave equation and cylindrical coordinates uh, and we said uh, we will drop the angular dependence. So, the equation was something like this. So, I asked you to obtain a solution in terms of separation of variables right, I mean I said we cannot find the solution of the form f of x plus c t and g of x minus c t. So, we use <coughs> so there is no way to know whether separation of variables will work or not <coughs> you have to assume a separable form put it in and see if you can separate it if it if it works fantastic if it does not work ok nice try. <coughs> so, p equal to r of r times t of t. So, it will substitute in here. So, I will get uh, t of t times <coughs> 1 over r. So, now what I did is to substitute this expression into this p d and then uh, differentiate it. <coughs> so, if I divide by t of t r of r, I would get 1 over r d square r by d r square. I am not writing the dependency in bracket now plus 1 over r. this ok. So, while you write I will erase the board. So, what do you observe from this? The left hand side is actually a function only of r. So, this is a function of r and uh, the right hand side is function of time. Should be non zero at all, at all or in all things. Uh, why? Because where I mean only thing is these things should exist and divided by R of R and T of T. Yeah. It will be non zero. Why? I mean r is 0 this can also go to 0 and their limit can exist. So, we can then only limit, so limiting points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <coughs> you have a function of r 
which is equal to a function of time. So, if a function of uh, one variable equal to function of another variable, left, left hand side is purely a function of r, right hand side is purely a function of time and then what, what should they be? They should both, uh, they should be a constant. So, this should be equal to constant. So, we will call this minus k square. there is no sanctity about the minus sign and uh, it is just to make things look pretty. Uh, okay, we can relook at this issue later. <coughs> so, we know how to solve the uh, both the parts. So, first part would be one over c squared times one over t d squared t by d t square equal to minus k squared. So, this will be uh, d squared t by d t squared uh, equal to minus omega squared t or get the solution of this form. In fact, you can show that when you take the total product and write the pressure, you will get the same relation whether you keep e power i omega t or e power minus i omega t or you keep both. So, it is enough to keep just one of them and just be consistent. And the other equation is d squared r over d r square plus 1 over r dr by dr equal to minus k squared r. So, I will take this to the other side. So, this is the Bessel's equation of 0th order. And the solution is and I emphasize that if you are not familiar with Bessel equation, study about it. So, just to uh, understand how the Bessel functions behave, we can take a look at its uh, the asymptotic uh, relations of Bessel functions, which will give you a hint of how things work. So, Bessel functions have asymptotic, uh, nice asymptotic relations. So, asymptotic relation means when k r is much larger than or, you can show that j naught of k r equal to root of 2 over pi k r cos k r minus pi over 4 and y naught of k r equal to root of 2 over pi k r sin of k r minus pi over 4. <coughs> Uh, I must emphasize that these formulas are valid only for k r is much greater than 1 and if they are uh, low, lower than 1 near 0, these formulas are not valid. Mm. Any questions? So, if you uh, look at the Bessel function um, j naught and y naught plot. So, J naught would look like this. So, this envelope will be going like 2 over 
like here. So you can see there is some kind of periodicity, but then on, there is a uh, kind of evanescence or decay. So uh, if you rewrite this with this asymptotic formula, again it is valid only when Kr is much larger than 1. So this is kind of analogous to our expressions we had, we had sin and cos, so this is something like that. So J0 is kind of analogous to the um, plane wave cos kx minus phi over 4 and y0 can be thought of as the other one and uh, we can also write in terms of Hankel functions and maybe um, some of you are inclined towards maths, they can um, see physically maybe so I should put a prime here just to denote that this A is different when you are writing for Hankel. So there are two Hankel's functions, Hankel function of first kind and second kind and they are like J0 plus IY0 and J0 minus IY0. You know that uh, E power I theta is cos theta plus I sin theta, so this is some kind of generalization of that form. <coughs> so if you again go by the asymptotic formula then you can get. Of course, this formula is valid only in the far field when Kr is much larger than 1, but it will give you a hint that uh, you have a uh, progressive wave e power uh, something and e power minus something, e power ikr, there is a phase shift by pi by 4, similarly e power minus ikr, but divided by a root r dependence. <coughs> And uh, this is quite easy to imagine because when you have a uh, spherical spreading, you have your power goes like so, pressure will go like um, 1 over root r, same with velocity. But this, this is valid only in the far field, in the near field things will be quite complex. So which this, this is why you get this 1 over root r here because you are having spreading of the wave. So it is really not, uh, although the amplitude uh, comes down as you go away, you should not think of it as being some kind of damping or attenuation, it is just spreading out. It is just like if you have a, a lamp turned on 
and it shines bright, but if you go farther and farther away the amount of light you that falls on um, some object will keep coming down. That is because the same amount of light is spread into um, everywhere around. So, uh, the same thing with sound I, I mean uh, you are when you are far away the same amount of power is spread to more and more area. So, the intensity goes like 1 over r and the pressure and velocity will go like 1 over square root of r, which is why you see this kind of uh, dependencies here 1 over root r here and um, here also and which is why I mean the Bessel functions capture this dependence perfectly and that is why the, you got the solution as j naught and k naught uh, instead of getting sin and cos and, and j naught and y naught uh, they capture cylindrical uh, spreading. So, they are called cylinder functions this j naught and y naught and they, they capture cylindrical spreading we are having a cylindrical spreading that is the key thing. <coughs> you could imagine what would happen if you are having a 3D propagation what would happen W would be constant over R squared and pressure would be like 1 over R and velocity will also be like 1 over R. In fact, you can actually get a rigorous solution that way. Uh, in terms of traveling waves whereas, here you cannot in the near field there is a problem which is why you cannot get a solution, but for spherical you can actually get uh, pressure as f of x minus or r minus c t over r plus g of r plus c t over r you can actually work this out the homework. And uh, what would be the corresponding uh, solutions in harmonic domain in, in spherical coordinates I said we get solutions as f of uh, let me write it down you can get k prime right like f of r minus c t over r plus d of so what would be the um, corresponding solution in the harmonic domain here we got j naught and y naught what would we get for spherical propagation you must have studied this in some other class in physics any physics minors here ah so you must answer what what would be the answer can you guess for spherical instead of j naught and y naught what will be will be j half and j minus half ok and uh, any questions on this. So, uh, we uh, I, I wish to uh, do more of multi dimensional a little bit more, but before we do before we do a general circular duct and look at the natural frequencies and so on, we will work out a simpler problem of sound propagation or acoustic field in a box that is a simpler problem and we will do that we will look at natural frequencies and things like cut off and cut on and then we will come to this cylindrical thing again. So, what, what would you call it box right that is the right word rectangular prism whatever it is. must be some fancy name, but we will call it box cuboid ok. So, we are looking at acoustic fields in a cuboid which I call box and uh, uh, of course, we are we can be very thrilled because we can live with only sin and cos or e power i k x and e power minus i k x no Hankel no Bessel throw them away. <coughs> so, the wave equation would be So, again we can do our separation of variables so we say I will use the same notation as notebook p equal to f of x 
d of y f e h d h of z and t of t. So, you can substitute this in here and now by now you know the trick you divide throughout by p and uh, uh, then you can uh, uh, separate out the terms as function of x, function of y, function of z, function of time. So, if you do this you will get uh, f times d square no d square f by d x square times g h t plus f d square g by d y square h t plus f g d square h over d z square t equal to 1 over c square f g h times d square t by d t square. This is okay. So, this is a function of function of time and this is a function of space. So, if a function of time is equal to function of space then both must be constants. So, we will again call this as minus k square and sorry oh yeah I have to divide. So, so I jumped the gun sorry. So, we will have to edit it and erase it out. So, I must divide throughout by f g h t. So, I will get 1 over f d squared f by thanks plus So, now I can say this is a function of space and here is a function of time. So, both must be equal to a constant and so once this is a constant and then you can keep these two on one side and bring this the other side. Then you have function of x and y being equal to function of z. So, those must be constants and then you can bring y to the other side and say function of x equal to function of y. So, that should also be a constant. So, we can uh, each of these terms independently must be a constant. So, this can be called minus k x square minus k y square minus k z square. So, we have this relation now or alternately I can remove this minus sign. So, this is like a constraint or a compatibility condition or something like that. So, now we need to solve it for a very specific problem. So, let us look at a case now comes the box this is x and this is y. So, let us believe that we have a wall which is rigid, we have walls which are rigid, 
uh, we can also have walls which are flexible or impedance walls and so on. This is very simple, so we can uh, work out the problem algebraically. So, when we have a rigid wall duct, what is the boundary condition? Ah, velocity should be zero. So, velocity will go like dp by dx, right? So, you can say. x equal to 0 and x equal to b, this, uh, this dimension is b and we can say dp by dy equal to 0 at y equal to 0, y equal to h. So, if you differentiate, we can get dp by dx will be, okay, you will have some constants times minus, okay, first let me write the solution did not write that, it is by now obvious to you the solution. So, P of x comma y comma z comma t would be C 1 e power minus i k z z plus C 2 e power plus i k z z multiplied by e power minus i k x plus C 3 e power so there should be a constant here, but it is a linear problem. So, I can I will never recover all the constants. So, I can divide throughout by if I had C 3 and C 4, I can divide three uh, throughout by C 4 and rewrite this as uh, multiplied by So, this would be the uh, solution to our, our PD and now, so this is the solution what is given here and this is the boundary condition, okay, I will pause for a minute. So, uh, if you evaluate dou p by dou x, it will go like okay, some constant blah 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 times e power i k x x plus so I am writing only the x term and putting clubbing everything else into some bracket here. Now, if this is uh, 0 at x equal to 0. So at x equal to 0 equal to 0 that would mean that minus 1 plus c 3 equal to 0 which will mean c 3 equal to 1. So, this term would be, so if I were to evaluate this at x equal to b next uh, dp by uh, dx 0 at x equal to b. So, I will get uh, e power minus i k x b plus e power plus i k x b because I have got c 3 to be uh, c 3 to be 1. So, it is 1 here 1 here. So, this should be equal to 0. So, I will divide and multiply by 2 i and 2 i and so I will get sin k x b equal to 0. So, this should give k x equal to m pi over b where m is 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this should be fairly peaceful. So, similarly, 
if you apply the second boundary condition if you apply this boundary condition you should get k y you will get sin k y into h equal to 0 and you should get k y equal to n pi over h and n equal to 0 1 2 3. You can work it out it should work out the same way exactly the same way. Okay, mistake. So let us write the final solution. thing multiplying <coughs> so this would be our general solution and it will be a summation of all the modes of course depending on what mode you set up only that mode will be there or you can have a combination set up and so on. But what is important this k x and uh, is not an independent thing you will get this is what you get for kz the axial wave number depends on the frequency and also the m and n the modes which are set up across the duct. I will pause for a moment for you to see this is a so this is uh, straightforward algebra I hope there are no mistakes. Mistake here should be minus. Should be minus here. That's where you get sign. And so when you have um, C three as one, and then you will get e power minus i k z z plus e power i k z z multiply and divide by two, you'll get cosine. And the same thing for the y term, you'll get e power minus i k y plus e power i k y multiple and divide by 2 you will get cos k y okay. So now uh, you got this expression but this has very interesting implications which we will look at it in detail in next class but I will give you a hint of it uh, what happens when this second and third term overwhelms k naught what happens when k naught squared is less than m pi over b squared plus n pi over h squared this whole term becomes negative take a square root of a negative number it becomes imaginary. So what, what does k z being imaginary mean? Yeah, so it, it will not be any more periodic anymore 
e power i k z will um, will actually become work like e power alpha uh, e power i uh, i k z times z will work kind of like e power alpha z so which will be like exponential decay and so we will see in next class under what conditions you will have a periodic kind of solution under what condition we will have a um, uh, uh, decaying solution and therefore this will relate to which <coughs> modes can propagate and which modes cannot pro propagate so I will stop here I am out of